It, yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't think you we're did live, it. Man. God, I don't I don't think we're live either, but yeah, it not, literally not, just notified me that we're live. Shut the fuck up. I don't see it. On, I don't me. see it on YouTube. I'm it not takes kidding. a second. Relax. Everybody calm. <laughs> just calm down. <laughs> Oh man, Jenna just said her claws almost gone. That's not good. Guys, ask her. Oh, no, that's see bad. Us. Well, she'll have to get in. Yeah, one. we're live, dude. Shut oh, we're the live. Fuck up. We're We've down. done it. God, you guys are the worst people in the world. <laughs> not you, Brosners. You two fucking idiots. Nice work on setting up being here on time. Good, good hey, work. Hey, you did it, Ritef. You did, did it. You, you did got it. us you online. You we're job. live. Your fake PhD has come through, professor. Congratulations. Uh, Oh, thanks, baby. I'm so stressed. Boris, yes. What's up, brother? How are you, Patrick? How are you, man? I'm good, man. I'm feeling feeling great, actually. Got my Wild Times tank on for the live. Yeah, that's what's up. Um, oh, yeah. Just got back from my uh, my friend's giving trip, which was a treat. Making some nice food when I get off this pod. I'm feeling good. Happy to be home. Everything's nice. How about you guys? What's going on? We haven't ca- connected much this week while I've been gallivanting around the woods. Dude, I have to say, so right before we went live, I said to Forrest, because we're late, should we go shirts optional? And Jenna Faber right out the gate saying, we deserve shirts optional for the wait. I mean, <laughs> we've got to give the fans what they're asking for, Papa P. Yeah, do it. Take that shirt yeah. off. Take your top off well, now. We'll, we'll pop it off in due time. Look, I haven't even had a drink yet. I, I, I made a promise on Instagram that I was going to have a nice drink. And I was so stressed out by Retep being useless at this live thing. That uh, mm-hmm. I haven't even yep, bored it. That's so me I'm working on it right now, dude. You had you had six hours to pour a fucking drink. What have you been doing? Hey, Ooh, some of delicious. us have other lives other than the podcast, right, Ritev? Okay. Oh yeah. So remember when I was going to complain about you last podcast when we started and I never got to it? No. Well, it's it's two to three times worse this week because <laughs> I've been texting you two assholes for literally since Tuesday to find out when we're recording this week. No reply. I Pat was off the grid. Fuck, fuck you. Yeah, That's, yeah. You've been off the grid us. for... Right. Okay. What's your excuse, uh, Pat? Uh, dude, I was legit off the grid for three <laughs> days, man. I was filming up north. When I'm filming, I, I do a little thing for myself. I turn my fucking phone onto airplane mode. You know who doesn't yeah, like real it? Real smart when I you have, have two, to conduct two business. People. Idiot. Okay, two people who don't like it. Christina and Ratep. They're the two people <laughs> I know are going to get mad. After I have my phone in airplane mode for three days. Both your wives. <sighs> yeah. yeah. And, then, exactly. and then you got Forrest over here with his bullshit excuse. Cause I see him posting to his story. I know the exact times that he has Wi-Fi <laughs> and connection claims that he hasn't been unavailable for two weeks. Fuck you All guys. Right. So Love we're live. Guys. We're live. We are live. Right. Shout this out to Matt good. McHugh. Yeah. Matt McHugh wants us to pause so I can get my chain. Smart. Yeah, your yeah. gold what chain and no your shirt. Gold chain? That was short it's lived. In our, it's in the room. It's okay. in the other room. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. All right, good. Forrest, get this shit started. All right. Nick Ladies Tom and one. gentlemen, welcome to the Wild Times, episode 36. You are joined tonight, as always, by myself, the broologist, the ever handsome professor who's headbanging over there, Mr. Ratep. What's going on, Ratep? Uh, not much, man. I'm in a great mood, not stressed at all. Very happy. We got this popping off. We got several million people concurrently viewing the YouTube <laughs> live sure. right now, at least 77 million. Love you guys. And then and the handsome gentleman in the lower left corner of my screen, the bro producer who was off grid bro producing Mr. Patrick DeLuca. What's up, Papa P cheers. cheers. Drink an American lager. Uh, I support American companies. It's, uh, it's delicious. It's crisp. Uh, and I'm just happy, man. It's Christmas time. I got two trees up at the house. Two. Some wrapped. Yeah. Some wrapped presents are starting to show up under the tree. Wow. From elves. They're all uh, <laughs> the from tags all say from elves. And uh, it's good, man. This is the best time of year. This yeah. next this next three weeks is my favorite time of year every single fucking year. I, I know I it, it is. I think this will be the first yeah. year I haven't seen your Christmas display in probably our six or seven years of friendship because of COVID. Yeah, man. I don't, I don't even it. know what it looks like. Wait, hey, what is uh, Christmas like in Zimbabwe? Uh, hot. It's the middle of summer. Um, uh-huh. It's usually yeah. like 95 degrees out and you have a tree and you watch TV where it's snowing in America and the kid's getting his his tongue stuck to the frozen ice ball. And you're like, I don't understand this. I'm from Africa. This doesn't make any sense. It's hot here. And uh, it's fun. Yeah, it's really fun. 
do people get in the like is there is christmas kind of a thing in zimbabwe like do oh, people big celebrate time. yeah big oh, time because it's right. you know it's 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 um english christian like community so there's christmas is a big thing you know it's not cold there's no snow uh people go on holiday like what you do in the summer here like you go to a lake house or you you know maybe go on safari which is less what people do here but it's uh it's still a big thing for sure. Yes. Yeah, Christmas is big. It's just usually like 94 degrees out, which is uh, not quite the same feeling. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. By the way, Daniel Cool, Courtney Granger, and Adi are all chiming in. They're, they're saying, sounds like an Australian Christmas. Very international shit going on right now with the yeah. Brosners. Well, Southern Hemisphere Wonderful. Christmas. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Oh, Brosters, what are you drinking tonight? We're looking at your comments coming up. You know, I, I've made myself a delicious orange old fashioned. Patrick's got himself a uh, an American lager. Ritep, what are you working on? I got myself a uh, 19 Crimes glass of wine and three tall boy Modellos just in case we get crazy. I was going to say there's That's no it. way you're only drinking a glass of wine. That doesn't sound right. Nah, I've been drinking for two weeks straight. <laughs> By the way, we got so so far we've got a uh, cheap box red wine, beers, right. Jack Daniels, Amarita, and lime juice. Fireball! It's Christmas time. White claws. Mm. <laughs> uh, someone, James O'Hara, says Tiger Blood. Am I too nice. old to know what that is? What the fuck is Tiger Blood? I don't know, dude. It's the Charlie Sheen thing, you idiot. It's from years ago. He was, you know, he drinks Tiger Blood because he's insane and it makes him powerful. By the way, James O'Hara has incessantly been all caps texting in the chat. He wants, uh, he keeps mentioning Dolores. He wants a P.O. box. He has a gift. Oh, for come it. on. Come on. That's out of, that's out of line, James. <laughs> that's, that's, I, that's mental, it's man. It's not me. <laughs> that shit ain't happening, boy. So uh, yep. for all the roasters that have joined us live tonight, this, this act, this happened by accident. Um, yep. Yeah, this mm -hmm. really, really did. So I put up a story on my Instagram that was like, hey, going to make myself this nice drink live on the show tonight, not realizing that it's not a live show. <laughs> And then Ritep texted me <laughs> in a sweaty panic going, are we going live tonight? And I just wrote back, yeah, I guess. And so yeah, here I we mean, are. You know, I, yeah. I, don't get, I don't get a text back for weeks. And then you post, <laughs> I'm getting drunk live tonight on the podcast. <laughs> And so ob obviously He's so I'm sweaty. Uh, <laughs> and a little dude, concerned. The, and the professor's sweat smells so specifically and onions. <laughs> it's got such a specific reek to it. That. I'm very successful. I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking. Well, oh, real man. quick, for those who are here to actually listen to some wildlife shit, Forrest, your desk is made out of pure mahogany. I've seen it. That's right. I also it's have very many smooth leather yeah. bound books. Yeah, you it smells many. very nice. So what came across your mahogany desk this week? What's <sighs> like your number one? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Number one, hands down, big thing, a believed to be new discovery. Right now, now usually when we just think we're discovering a new species, we're like, "Oh my goodness, great! This new tiny little ant that nobody's seen before." No, no, not this time, baby birds. This is a new species of whale that is believed to have been discovered wow. this week off the coast of Mexico. Wait so a minute, not... were they at a bar in Oswego, New York, or what? <laughs> oh my god! With so all your ex-girlfriends swimming around. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> No, so this is this is a real thing. After a few isolated reports, a team of researchers set out to try and find what kind of whales were making these unidentified acoustic signals. So each whale has their own acoustic signature, right? They all sound different. It's kind of like accents for, for humans, right? It's like, oh, you're from Australia. You sound goofy as shit, Mott. And, uh, yep. you know, we sound terrible because we're <laughs> Americans and I say zebra funny. You know, all whales sound different. Um, but beaked whale experts working alongside the Sea Shepherd, Patrick, you may have a tad of familiarity with them, sure um, managed to take photographs and video recordings of three whales that were completely unidentified and also recorded their acoustic signature and confirmed that this is, well, it's, it's still up in the air because there's no genetics yet, but more or less confirmed that there is a new species of whale 300 miles from the U.S. border. That's fucking bizarre. Did it say what depth they were at when they found these whales? On, on, the, on the surface. Nope. They came up to breach. Now, here's what's crazy, right? Like, we Whoa. think we know everything, right? We think we know about the whole world. We're like, oh, we've we got it all on lockdown. You know, these are new species, not of ants, not of little tiny microscopic things, of freaking whales that we're uncovering in 2020. New yeah. species yeah. of whale. This is huge. Like, this is. You know, this goes no pun intended. <laughs> this goes along with everything I've ever said 
which is that, you know, we, we are so arrogant in the assumption that we know everything and the world's a big place and there's so much left to be discovered. Thank you, WT Willie, pulling up the, the video. Do you mind hitting, uh, is there play on that? I don't even remember from the article. Uh, there is a video. Yeah. Can you hit play on that? There, so there these they are. are. Whales. These, these are, are the them. species. Holy shit. Yep. It's crazy that they got these on, on video too, you know, like out of all the, is it, it what is it? It's something like we only know 5%. We've only explored 5% of the ocean. Is it? I don't know that, what the stat is, but it's it is? something very limited. You know, the saying that everybody goes by is we know more about the surface of the moon oh, that's than we do about the okay, bottom so of the it's, ocean. It kind of looks like a... Uh, one of those beaked whales. It looks Correct. more like a porpoise or a dolphin. Correct. Probably larger pilot whale type thing. Yep. Yep. Exactly. It looks um, like a beaked uh, whale. You know, Owen, and you Owen Roberts on YouTube says they discovered my mom. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Tompkins has a serious question for us. He says, Do you think that this has something to do with human absence due to COVID? Oh, that's a good As question. we've seen that before already during this thing. So where they found these whales, the San Benitos Islands, I've actually been out there fishing a couple times. It's beautiful out there. There is there is a settlement um, at Cedros, which is the island right next to the San Benitos, um, where people live year round, regardless of COVID, et cetera. And, you know, these people make their livelihood fishing. I think what this is, is oversight, so to speak. You know, we think we know everything. We've been around. We've seen, you know, how many hundreds of people or dozens of people have arguably seen these whales, but they don't know enough about species of whales to go, wait a minute, that looks different. Or, hey, that sounds different. So my guess is it's not, it's kind of one of those hidden in plain sight, like right under our nose type things where these whales mm -hmm. have probably been around, you know, but when you see a spout in the distance, you don't go, oh my God, that's a new species of whale because you think, you know, every species of whale or we as human beings think we know that. So I think it just took someone with a keen eye from the Sea Shepherd or Conap to be like, wait a minute, something's different here, and then go out and confirm it, which I think is absolutely incredible. That's amazing, dude. That's super cool. Dude, speaking of speaking of unidentified or sh you know shit that we think that we know but we don't know shit about, did you guys see this Israeli space security chief says that uh, extraterrestrials do exist and that Trump knows about it? This is like legit on mainstream news, on like NBC News and all the other sites. This guy literally says that there's a galactic federation that's been waiting for humans to reach a stage where we will understand what space and spaceships are. This is like a decorated general, dude. Where, where are you this. getting this from? I don't know what it's, you're talking it, it about. It went around this week. It went around okay. the time. I, on, so I, I know a couple of guys. In fact, the guys I was filming with this week um, claimed to be in contact with the, the galactic federation. Wait, so really, the Galactic really? Federation. What is the Galactic yeah. Federation for those of us that have only watched Star Wars once? Okay, so it, all right, look, man, I'm a, I'm a big time believer in aliens, and for sure. of course, I just think you know there's billions and billions of stars, and we happen to you know cruise around one, and we're here, so I'm thinking there's other shit. Uh, Hundred percent agree. Uh, the Galactic Federation is a bit goofy when you start really getting into it. It's uh, Apparently, a spaceship that's five miles long, uh, where a bunch of people who just sound like normal humans, because sometimes, sometimes, people from the Galactic Federation will call into radio talk shows uh, hmm. and talk to them, and they just sound like me or you or Ratep, more likely. Um, <laughs> and so, what does that mean? I, I don't know. The Galactic Federation is supposedly a group of this people that live on a spaceship yeah. that's huge. They're like 700 years old. It's a, it's pretty creepy. The, so, so the galactic federation isn't a group of people. It's a group of extraterrestrials from around but they the sound universe. Like English speaking white. Men. Listen to me. Stop, stop fucking making oh, it know, sound insane. You're, you're mixing it fact. No, well, because it you is. talk to your fact? fucking Bitcoin harvesting. The galactic federation is fact. You idiot. I'm, I'm <laughs> reading the fucking NBC news article. You moron. You're, you're literally putting out misinformation. Bro, the Galactic Trump's Federation is up. not a group of 700 year old tall humans who call into radio shows. You morons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, idiot. By the way, Nick, Anyways. Nick Tompkins, Ratep, just gave he said the right. South Park episode of Whale Wars was amazing a at the time that this happened. So Forrest, at yeah. the time that uh, the professor and I were, were uh, making the show Whale Wars, South Park did a spoof episode. I've seen it. I've seen the South Park called, spoof. Yeah, Whale Wars. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, 
And how spot episode. on is it? It's so <laughs> spot on. And like, everyone was like, Hey, are you upset? Like, are you, I was like, no, we just got spoofed on South park. That's right. like the best That's compliment huge. we could ever get. Literally. If, no, it's also, if family guy yeah. or South park made fun of, me running around chasing animals and extinct or alive, I could die happy. That's all I want. That's the yeah, only reason I do the sure. show. Like, are you kidding yeah, me? That's a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I mean, also, it, it when it's on South Park, it spreads the word to tens of millions of people who have never heard of the show. So it's like yeah, yeah. immediately, you know? Yeah. If, it was great, though. Yeah. If you and I weren't drunk the entire time we worked on that show, we probably would have celebrated it more. But. <laughs> God, that's, that's before, did I, did I know you before I was on the show? I just remember hating you when I first met you and then we became friends right. for, so, I don't even remember how, do you remember how? No, I, I knew that you didn't like me. Um, you're very unlike, you are very unlikable. Uh, look, face and <laughs> I don't just give love to ever, like if I know you, I'll, I'll do anything for you. It's if true. I don't know you fuck off. Unless that's you're true. a gross nerd Can, and then I love you so much. <laughs> I, I I do have a question. What what do you think Forrest would look like as like a uh, South Park rendition? I mean, would it just be a giant head with two little feet? Oh, as that's, that's like no, they You're would mean they guy. would they would make fun of his cheeks for sure. Yeah, they have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. chipmunk. Yeah, it's very chip, great. chipmunk esque. <laughs> It'd look like way a in. Send us Forrest <laughs> like on South Park. Art. All right, so let's get let's let's attempt to not derail so much. Um. Anybody, uh, anybody else got anything? I've got a one or two more things that came across my desk earlier today. Anything um, from you guys that you found interesting? I was, I got into something that's actually not on the show doc, but uh, I started going down this wormhole about uh, the reintroduction of wolves into Yellowstone. Okay. Yep. Familiar with the story. Fucking fascinating, man. Like, did you watch it, the video about how it, uh, uh, you know, changed the habitat, et cetera? No, you might know more than I do. I just started getting into it because I was looking at it for this show thing. And just the fact that we'd essentially eradicated wolves from the Yellowstone area because they're interfering with ranching activity, reintroduced them, and they're thriving. Like they went right back to like, they're thriving. Uh, I saw a video with some interaction between uh, a group of wolves and a bear, uh, a mm -hmm. Yellowstone grizzly. Um, and it's funny, the grizzly kind of comes down this hill and just looks up and sees that there's a bunch of wolves in this field. And it's like, you can just see the bears like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> because, it, you know, this bear's lived its whole life without wolves probably. And now all of a sudden he's like, that's terrifying, but it's pretty cool. It's yeah. like, I think maybe for us, I might be wrong, but it seems like a really good example of like humans doing something right when it comes to uh, rectifying a situation in wildlife. Maybe I'm wrong. No, hundred percent accurate. Um, there, you know, it's really fascinating what happened with wolves in Yellowstone. So there was a big fight, you know, there's big legislative fight to not bring the wolves back into Yellowstone. Uh, people were up in arms about it. Ranchers in the surrounding area were terrified. They thought it was going to kill all their livestock. Anyway, after a long battle, they eventually did pass the bill to say they could reintroduce wolves into Yellowstone. So at first, what, what did we see? We just saw a few wolves running around, right? But I think the most fascinating thing that came out of this was upon the reintroduction of wolves in Yellowstone, it changed the course of the rivers within Yellowstone National Park. Now, people were like, what the hell? Why are wolves changing rivers? Yeah, how does, that how does this work? Yeah. So what yeah, happened was that's crazy. with the lack of wolves, the large undulates like, um, like elk and, and moose, Etc. were walking around and eating all the vegetation. And they were eating all the easy to get to vegetation, which was lining the riverbanks. Now, this was causing tons and tons of erosion and effectively destroying the riparian habitat. Now, when the wolves got introduced, they started to put the fear of God into all of these undulates that had no, no longer had predators. Long story short, they knocked down the, pop, the overpopulation of herbivores and what that did is it allowed the rivers and streams to grow the necessary vegetation along their along their shorelines to actually effectively increase the health of the ecosystem because the rivers and streams started meandering again and weren't affected by all of the erosion, which in turn was affecting the fish, the amphibians, everything else. So that little piece of the puzzle, just taking wolves out and putting them back in, changed the entire ecosystem. It redirected rivers, it changed streams, it changed riparian habitat. I mean, it was absolutely incredible what they found. It was something that no one could have predicted. They, they knew that it would drive down the, the populations of the, of the grazers, of the herbivores, 
They had no idea that it was going to change the entire river ecology to make a healthier ecosystem. Uh, Blake, Blake Iverson here says that a wolf was tracked recently down to around the Truckee area in California. And he wants to know how long until wolves may migrate further south all the way to like Mammoth or whatever. Well, that's, I mean, you, that's you such that's a cool question because Forrest and I worked on a, an episode where we looked for the Rocky Mountain gray wolf. Yep. Um, and one of the things we talked about was when we were in pre-production on that episode was, do we consider looking for the, was it the California gray wolf yep. or no? Yep. Or one the of California the California wolf that, pack, yeah. Yeah, that they could, there was a couple rumored wolf sightings near the, the Mammoth area and near right. the Tahoe area. Right. So we looked at that and we're like, no, we got to go to the Rockies. But um, that's a really cool question. I'm, I'm curious what you think about that. Uh, it, it, you know, if left to their own devices, it is only a matter of time, no doubt about it. I mean, wolves belong in the state of California. They were here long before humans. You know, they deserve to be here. We push them to the edge and they are slowly moving south. I think it was 2018 that the first wolves moved into Northern California, uh, coming down from Washington through Oregon. Um, and, you know, now apparently they're all the way south down to Truckee. Now, Truckee is not you know, extreme Northern California. It's really not. It's, it's, it's kind basically of like central for, Northern. for people who don't know where Truckee is. That's basically like Tahoe. It's right next to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is, you know, it's, it's two hours from the San Francisco. It's, it's not like the far Northern reaches. So they are slowly moving down through the Sierras as they should be avoiding human beings as wolves tend to do. And uh, I think <laughs> if, you know, left to their own devices, of course there's roads and human, human impact to consider, but I think that, you know, within inside of 15, 20 years, we should have wolves throughout the state of California where they belong, meaning, you know, not on the beach, not in Palm Desert, Sierras and in the red, et cetera, et cetera. What was the stat about how many how many miles a day a wolf will travel? Isn't it like 50 or something? Something crazy. Up to 150. Yeah, they travel, I think, 30 miles a day on average and they can travel up wow. to 150 in a day. That's insane, dude. That is crazy. Dude, if I do 150 miles in my car in a day, I'm like, I'm shot. I need a glass of wine. <laughs> I'm shot. I need a cab. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So lots. Of, yeah, that's good stuff. So you guys know that um, I'm a big fisherman, right? I love fishing. I love fly oh, yeah. fishing. Yep. One of the fish mm -hmm. species that I love to target fly fishing is a fish called the bonefish. Now, bonefish are small species of shallow water fish, you usually target them by walking out on these flats like seagrass beds where the water is like two to three foot deep. And you see these schools of these beautiful fish, they get up to like six, eight pounds cruising around, you stalk them and you throw a fly really lightly in front of them with a crab mimic and they come and nail it, and give you a good old fight. Then you catch them and release them. Now, as far as we have known in science, bonefish live exclusively on these flats, right? Yes, they'll travel across oceans. You know, there's even been bonefish that turn up in Hawaii relatively regularly. Um, but overall, they live on these flats. That's what we know about bonefish. Well, just this week, uh, Florida Atlantic University announced a discovery that bonefish, these shallow water fish, these incredible like fighting fish that live up on these flats that nobody's ever seen in, I'd say, deeper than six feet of water, actually travel off of the coastal waterways to depths of nearly 500 feet to spawn. Um, oh, wow. Now, what what I found so interesting about this, like, okay, cool, we get it. Like, these shallow water flats fish head out to deep sea to spawn, and then they come back to the flats. That's really cool. It's unexpected for sure. But I think what was so interesting is the methodology in which they made this discovery. They used acoustic telemetry. <laughs> telemetry. <laughs> Here we go. I know. Cheers. Here we go. Uh, out they, of space. Zebras. They used acoustic tel telemetry <laughs> tags. Wow. Um to show in real time where the bonefish were um, and to show that they were capable of handling these extreme depth pressures and reaching, you know, 300 feet in the first dive, meaning that they put on these little tags that would send a sound signal and they're listening at the sound and, and basically how the sound is recorded tells them the pressure at which the fish are, are living. And they chase these fish off of the six foot flats and a second later, they'd be in 300 feet. I mean, I think it's amazing. Well, yeah, that's fucking cool as shit. And part of what I think is so cool about that is just the fact that humans, you know, it's easy to just assume that all humans dedicate resources towards making more money, making better cell phones, making smaller microchips. But like the fact that this technology has gone towards just something as simple as 
trying to preserve or understand more about an animal called the bone fish that isn't even <laughs> like a fish that you eat much. You right. know, it's like, it's not, haddock, right. it's not yeah. cod. Uh, right. It's called the bone fish. That's pretty <laughs> fucking amazing. That's astounding. In fact, like where the yeah, fuck awesome. does this money come from to, de to develop this device to track a bone fish? I couldn't. Yeah. I mean, I well, couldn't tell I mean, you, you because I've been involved in it, but yeah, I mean, it's wait, what you have been. In this device specifically? No, idiot. In writing grants for things that the majority of people don't care about. In acquiring finances to do studies. I, I, I helped uh, write a massive grant for, for a funding study to figure out whether or not fish, um, how, how they respond to electrotherapy, um, which was quite something. Meaning you zap some electricity in the water and do fish like it or do they swim away? And that was like a huge three-year project. Um, but yeah. Oh, so were you just stoned for three years and then you wanted to fuck around? No. What do you mean? Why would they stick around? They like it? Why would they no, like it? No, because fish have, it's harder to, it's, it's more complex. Let me than just that. tell me the, tell me the conclusion. Did they like it or did they not like it? No, they were, Which? Wh when they were stimulated by electricity, they, for the most part, did not like it, unless it was certain frequencies, in which case they liked it, which was the point Next of the time, study. just give me the money and I'll tell you the conclusion. Will, actually, Will is going to pull up a picture of the bonefish because at least 10 Brosners are asking, can I see a picture of the fucking bonefish? Will, Google bonerfish because you're, you're, I'm sure you're spelling <laughs> it wrong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> are you drunk, Forrest? What a bomb. Pull down what? your pants that was and show funny. me bonerfish. Come on. The people want to see your boner fish, not blurred like it was on fucking Jungle Potato. What the fuck? I can't remember the name of the show. Yeah, so, I'm definitely going to pull, no, pull Peter, my dick out. I'm, I'm really Peter. pissed at you, Peter, because... Fuck off. I don't care. No, I don't want to hear... No, the brosters want to know when me. there's rifts, and there's a current yeah. rift. Because a lot what of brosners do? are now making comments about my mom on the YouTube Live. You son of a bitch. It's unacceptable. Dude, I said I mentioned it. Well, oh, look at that bone fit. That's that's pretty big, bigger than I thought it would be. I should have sent Willie Will WT Willie a picture of me with a bonefish ahead of time. Oh hey, well. Why are they <laughs> called bonefish? Is it because it's all bones when you try to eat them yep. or what? Yep, exactly right. They're full of bones. You do not want to eat them. I, I believe you can like smoke them and scrape the bones out or something, but it's just like one of those things that's way more work than it's worth. And no, now there's that's not a that's, that's not that's a bonefish, Will. A turtle. And an alligator. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, come on. I, I mentioned her by the wrong name, maybe twice. And then it's the Brosners who are carrying it on. It's not me. It's There's, I apologize. I never knew we'd be so big and have so many listeners and fans. Well, look, my 76 year old mother doesn't want to be the subject of a bunch of uh, <laughs> Brosners. She just wants I to agree. Listen, peacefully I agree. live. I, I have not <laughs> mentioned her. You in, have retained in, in at least twenty episodes. Every episode, mate. Uh, you, you it's bring not it up true. Constantly. Matt McHugh is constantly texting me, trying to get her number and hey, her I just want to point address. out that uh, Jenna Faber made this the nicest comment of the night. One of the female Brosners. Patrick's mom is our mom too. Brosners are all family. I love that. Mm. Uh, yeah. Man, yeah, right. We, got the best. we have the best piece. We yeah. Pat, yeah. we do yeah. living yeah. the dream. Eight sixty five wants to know something important. Yeah. Though. What happened to Paul Watson? Because <laughs> he was in legal question. trouble that made him go on to the boat to begin with, right? Or like yeah, well, he never came back. He got yeah, so he got kicked ahead. out of uh, Greenpeace, right? He was one of the founding members of Greenpeace. Got kicked out because he was very aggressive. And and look. Paul is, I like Paul a lot because he's singularly focused. When you talk to him, there's nothing else there. You can't talk to him. You can't be like, hey, Paul, how you doing? Did you have a drink tonight? He's got one thing that he thinks about, and it's literally preserving ocean, ocean <laughs> life. And that's cool. Right. And I like talking to people that have one focus like that. Uh, but he's, you know, he breaks the law all the time. At a certain point, the I lost contact with Paul. He was in hiding in Canada because um, he was uh, he was going to be arrested if he set foot in the U.S. Um, I don't know where the fuck he is right now, to be honest. I don't think he's captaining any of the ships. Uh, Peter Hammerstead right. got in some trouble, too. The skinny. Oh, really? Yeah, he got in some trouble. He, he did some illegal stuff. But, like, the stuff they do is fucking rad, dude. Like, yeah, you know, right. right. Like, we did a thing together yeah. where uh, it, it was a special. Went to Libya. And uh, went into the Mediterranean and they were cutting open bluefin nets and oh, freeing mm -hmm. schools of bluefin. 
and the EU uh, issued a, an arrest warrant for Paul Watson because his ships cut open bluefin nets, even though in these bluefin nets documented on camera, they were uh, uh, well above the limit of what they were allowed to catch. They were allowed to catch 60 each. They had fucking nets that had 200, 300 bluefin tuna inside. They cut them open and freed them. And still the EU issued arrest warrants for Paul Watson. So like, I think he's a mm. fucking, I don't know, man, someone who dedicates their life to doing something that yeah, cool. Yeah, he's rad. Whatever, he's rad. like, mm -hmm. if he's having orgies on the boat, <laughs> Let him fucking have words Wait, on the what? boat, man. Like, that's what he's doing. Boy, that was out of left field. Is that what's happening? Eh, I mean, there's some of that, but <laughs> for him, dude. Wow. You heard it here first. Exclusive. Co-executive so producer. Look at of the Whale picture Wars. that WT Willie yeah. pulled up Paul Watson. Now, just take that in for one second. Now, you know how when you see like a, a big hefty gal with her pug, you're like, I get it. It looks like she looks like her dog, you know, or you see, <laughs> you, you see. <laughs> You see Sarah Jessica Parker next to a horse and you're like, oh, she rides. I get it. You know what I mean? That people start to look okay. like their pets or their obsession. Paul mm -hmm, Watson mm -hmm. looks like a, a marine mammal. Like, look at him. <laughs> Tell me he doesn't look like some kind of sea creature. He does. He does. He does. He's got he like does. a very merman. Like if that lower half of that body <laughs> yeah, had a tail. Merman. Yeah, Spoiler. I would totally yeah. be like, I get it. You know, he's part whale. He's part merman. Like, I see it. <laughs> I see it right now. I don't even Dude, have to see the lower half to know he's got fins. He's got fucking great hair. Look at his hair, man. I hope I have hair that good when I'm that age, man. That's like man, I have to be a merman. James O'Hara just summed it up in 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 five words. He looks like a dugong. He does. He looks just <laughs> like a dugong. Like it's 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 insane. <laughs> hey, Forrest, I want to get your opinion on this. So. Uh, my, my, uh, wonderful mother who shall not be named again on this podcast lives in okay. South Carolina, okay. uh, in the neighboring town, about 30 minutes from where they live, uh, someone was arrested. A guy was arrested because he had a hyena living in his backyard. No way. What? Yeah. Wow. An adult, not a, not a baby, an adult a hyena. In Internet. what state was this? South Carolina. So it's warm. Yes. It's more. It's wet. It rains a lot there. It's a weird climate. Probably not similar to the African Sahara. But uh, <laughs> he had a high a pet hyena, domestic. Well, it wasn't domesticated. But what's your thoughts on that? Can you domesticate a hyena? Should we? Should we get with some? Oh, man, <laughs> uh, WT Willie, if you can pull up uh, my buddy Dean Schneider's Instagram page, I'll show you some stuff with hyenas. It's going to blow your mind. Um, but should you have a hyena as a pet is I think what this comes down to. Yep. No, you should not. You absolutely <laughs> should sorry. not have a hyena as a pet. Now there's a lot of science has come out on hyena intelligence and compassion over the last 10 years. Literally since I left Africa 15 years ago, the mentality on hyenas has completely changed. They used to be like, they're, they're cunning, they're sly, they're kind of evil. Like they'll take any opportunity to bite, and I, I'll tell a story in a minute where I firsthand experienced that. Um, nice. But in today's world, like over the last 10, 15 years, we've really started to come to the understanding that there's a lot of compassion. So this is my buddy, Dean. Um, oh, wow. In fact, I just got off the phone with him before this podcast, believe it or not. And uh, he play, he has these hand-raised rescue hyenas in South Africa. And I mean, they love him and vice versa. Now, personally, wow. if one of us walked in and tried to do this with this hyena, he would look, rip your face off. Look at Zero that question. thing, Dude, Look at those yeah. teeth. Holy yeah. shit. Dude, this thing, I mean, the the way that they're interacting with him as if it's a fucking It like, looks a like a dog. dog like a pet man. dog. Yeah, right? it's yep. It's wild, and man. He's really. got a lot of this stuff. But so when I was a kid, our wow. neighbors had a game farm, right? Our, the direct farm right next to ours called Bally Vaughn Game Preserve. Um and they had all kinds of different stuff. Now, they had a couple hyenas at one point, spotted hyenas. Um, and I went over there one day, and that's the same place that I got hit by the lion. I think Patrick knows that story, yep. and yada, yada, yada. Um, I went over there one day, and there was this hyena. And I, I would play, like, tug of war with him through the fence, right? He'd, I'd stick the stick through the fence. He'd grab it. He'd play tug of war. It was kind of friendly, you know, but I was still nervous of him because it was a hyena after all. Right. So yeah. One day I played tug of war with this hyena for five, ten minutes, whatever. Well, sorry, with and what? With what? With a stick. Just with a stick through the fence. Okay. Okay. 
Now, all of mm-hmm. a sudden, this hyena becomes completely disinterested, loses all interest. I'm like, I don't know, nine, ten years old. So I'm like, oh, you know, play with oh, me. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm little. Yeah. Like, we used to go over there and see all the animals. And I'm like, play with me, hyena. Like, what's the matter with you? As a kid does, right? So I get, you know, the stick was maybe three feet long. So I get right up against the fence where I can, like, kind of shove the stick, you know, further in to try and entice him to grab the stick and play the tug of war game. Now I do this three Mm -hmm. or four times and the hyena's kind of sitting around totally disinterested. And then finally I'm trying to get his attention so much that I start to actually stick my hand through the fence to get, you know, to like get him with the stick. And he's, he's still like, you know, he's all nonchalant. (laughs) He's just like looking away. He's totally, totally disinterested in what I'm doing. And uh, the second that I stuck my hand through the fence, he snapped on and lunged at my arm to take off my hand with the quickest amount of speed I have ever seen an animal like that move. Now, I barely got my hand out. I literally felt the breath on my hand at the speed at which I pulled my hand back. It was that close. But I don't like to anthropomorphize animals. I don't like to give them human characteristics. But to me, and this is something about hyenas, like to answer Patrick's question, this animal, so smart, so cunning, it was like, oh, here's this little thing that's like prey, right? I can't get to it right yeah. now. Right. And I, I, I sincerely believe this. I can't get to it right now. There's this barrier between us. Right. So I'm going to entice him. So this hyena pl- like humored me by playing tug of war, stick with me for a while and then acted disinterested so that I would get and, and moved away from the fence so that I would get closer and closer until I stuck my hand through that. At that mm-hmm. time, the hyena went for me and it, literally the entire mood of the animal changed. And that is like that is my experience ah, with uh, with hyenas they are that cunning and that clever um that they will noel noel ebert says i mean you offered him a meat tug of war stick mate i I mean i did yeah i did and (laughs) i I think it was awesome (laughs) you're insane dude and you were like 10 listen to me like any normal person i'm just telling you my experience you know there's a guy on here there's a guy commenting named dr hyena dr hyena he's here a reliable doctor Dr. Hyena has a dope instagram page Oh, I'll get to check that out. Every fucking week, man, on the premieres when we drop the podcast. I dig that. Dr. Hyena, please weigh in in the comments. Like, this is my experience. I was young, so maybe I'm not remembering it exactly right, but I'm anthropomorphizing this animal in the sense of it played a trick on me to attempt to grab some fresh food. And I really, really believe that. Like, that's... You're not a fucking dumb dumb. So <laughs> I think that when we look at animals and, and anthropomorphize or say attribute certain behaviors to being more human behaviors, that's not really saying it was a human behavior. It's just saying it's a, it was a clever fucking animal. It was right. a really sure. clever animal that had right. to exist in it normally in the wild in a situation where they're competing with lions routinely. Yep. Right. 100%. <laughs> it's almost a bit egotistical to be like, yeah, like anytime an animal ha- does something smart, we're, we're, you know, you're calling it, it's a human behavior. It's like yeah, there's a lot of animals that are just pretty fucking, you know, g- in, ingenuous or whatever the fuck. Yeah, I, you I almost got it, but yeah. you weren't yeah, that close. close yeah. Almost were. Yeah. Guys, you weren't that yeah. close, on a side it, note, it lots of brosners are pointing out the fact that we have just hit triple digits on the live viewers uh, for 96. the first time during this episode. A hundred people. Shut the fuck up. It, <laughs> now it, was it says 95. Ago. People are leaving as you speak. <laughs> Oh, uh, God. You really know how to fucking kill a buzz. You well, real a quick, bitch, real quick on the hyena front. Yeah. Are, okay, real quick. This is important. One real hyena, quick, one quick. hyena, three pit bulls. Go. Who wins? Go, Ritap. <laughs> you, you've got to go first because you're an idiot. Okay. Uh, I, want, I want one question. I'm going to ask one question. How, how much does a hyena weigh, Forrest? Which species, sir? The one that will be fighting these three fucking pit bulls, obviously. Um, I have to look this up. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. I'm right there. I'm right there. I'm already out. What do we got? 90 to 170 pounds. That's I didn't know. I was going to guess 100 pounds, but 170 is a lot of pounds. 170 is huge. Yeah. Wait, one, so are we saying 170 or 100? Let's go 140 right in the mid. Yeah, I, I'm going to say if it was 100, I'd say that the pit bulls got it. 140, the hyenas got it. Yeah, I think three pit bulls win. 140's huge. I think three pit bulls win. I do, yeah. Look, they're big. They're solid, meaty dogs. Yeah, three on one, right? I mean, 
if us three took on Mike Tyson, we'd kick his ass, right? You know, one on one, he'd kill us. Bro, but... if us one took on Mike Tyson, we'd smash. Well, okay, current Mike Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what if us three yeah. took on Conor McGregor? How do you think we'd fare? We'd destroy him. Are you kidding I think me? We would. He's like It'd five be an egregious one. smash, dude. We would utterly See? dominate that cunt. Yeah, one on one, hyena wins. Three on one, pit bulls. By the way, if you're listening, Connor, and I think you probably are, uh, yeah, he's a fan. (laughs) We would like to challenge you to a three on one fight. We will do it for no money. (laughs) I'm in. That's right. I am game for that. Please, please, everybody, reach out to Connor McGregor. Let him know (laughs) the cats of the wild times would care to fight him. Three on one. By the way, this hinges a hundred percent on getting Ratap drunk and being like, "You go in, take all the damage." And then right. we'll yeah. kind of come in from the outside and yeah, hit him with a that's, hit him with a chalupa no, retap. Right. Just get in there. Now, it, listen, I'm eating the chalupa first of all. Second of all, g- me going in there first and us not attacking all at the same time is the stupidest fucking idea. That no, I think it's a, I think it's a good call because when Connor gets all worked no, it's up, not. it is because when Connor gets all Fuck worked off. up, he's he's beating the crap out of the guy on the ground, and that's <laughs> you. And then Patrick yeah, and I yeah. just fly in with knees, just nothing but knees. See what happens. Hey, I, one yeah. last thing on hyenas, man. I just pulled okay. up this picture of a hyena's teeth. They are banana. <laughs> they're insane. And yeah. when I say banana, <laughs> they're the size yeah. of bananas. They're <laughs> so sharp. And to think that this hyena has a, a bite force, even though it's not known for its bite force, uh, that's equivalent to a very strong dog's bite force, like a German shepherd. Uh, holy fuck. This is yeah. the scariest yeah. animal in the world, man. Hyenas yeah. are terrifying. <laughs> yeah, they're gnarly. <laughs> Good, yeah, um, all right, wanna, so I uh, I'm going to do something. It's going to rattle some feathers here. This is directed entirely at you, Papa P. All mm-hmm. right. Yeah, you made it very it. clear on the last pod that you never, ever, ever, ever wanted to do the Darwin Awards again. Well, guess what? We're going to do them live. I reached out to WT Willie. I said, Willie, get them up. We're doing them on the live tonight. We got three oh, yeah. new Darwin Awards for you to freak out about. And I want the Brosners to weigh in. And let's let's see if we can figure out who's going to win the Darwin Awards tonight. Uh, WT Fuck Willie, yeah. on you, sir. Did we lose here Patrick? We what just happened? No, he's here. I think he's just egregious in shock, maybe. Let me see. <laughs> no, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, he's God. just really he's upset. Wasted. He's hammered. He's hammered. No, right, let's see what this, I just hate this. People getting hurt. All right. He hates it. All right, let's, go. let's see what this first one's all about. Let's go. Used to be the alligator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this suit on and I'm going to actually swim a pond. We've got about an 11 foot alligator laying on the other side of this pond. I'm going to see if I can completely swim up to that They're alligator. All in Florida. Every one of them are in Florida. <laughs> This so he's, I love the preparation going into this Darwin Award. How's because his this shoulder is, knife? I, Sorry, Ritap. No, I'm just this is this is this is a very well planned out stupid thing to do. I would do this to be fair. Yeah, you've Pat, done Patrick's that. thinking of me you've doing done, this. You've done similar. I've seen yeah. Yeah. Well, last time we did Darwin Awards, a lot of people were sending me messages saying, "Well, Forrest is definitely going to be on the Darwin no Awards eventually." Said that. I swear I'm to God. An All right. Let's see what I'm happens here. You should be. Well, how long is this video? Is this 40 minutes? So the guy for the thing just on iTunes yeah. is a Skip guy who is putting on an alligator suit on his back. He's strapped on a costume, including a helmet that looks yeah. like an alligator head. <laughs> and now he's floating in the water. Oh, my God. How is he what is he doing? Suit. <laughs> Doesn't look like an alligator. He looks like a scarecrow. Look at him. He looks like such an idiot. No, they're bottom. Son of a bitch. There's security. He's in the water. Security. 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 Oh boy, that's a big male gator. That's he's making a mistake. Dude. Oh, okay. What is he? Oh my god. I got five. All right. Feet. Is that I'm guessing that's the end? Nothing, nothing too, too. Now we're gonna see if we can get closer to a group alligator. Well, no, he's gonna go closer. He's going closer. Mm, of course. 
You gotta go. Got you it. gotta get in. There. I hope this ends the way I'm expecting. If you're listening, <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! So he's <laughs> army crawling on the grass. Oh with... man! If you're listening to oh this, oh my god! He's gonna touch the tail. If you're listening to this, this guy's on fuck. iTunes and not not watching the Uh-oh. live, you can go oh, no. check it out on YouTube. He is uh this this guy is in an alligator costume. He's army crawling up to an alligator at what appears to be an alligator farm. Now he's funneling its tail. And now here's the thing. Even if the gator did believe he was an alligator, it wouldn't appreciate what he's doing. Dude, that's like, so he's not proving seven, anything. Probably a seven foot gator, six, seven foot. Yep. Something like that. As a person, so you can see you're not gonna oh, walk up please, on that come alligator. Get him. Does it come work? Get him. Even though it's still in the primitive stages, I think we got a winner. A winner? What did he win? Uh, I don't Is know he what he calling won. himself. All the right, winner let's of the see what, what else. What else do we have, Willie? That's so look, that guy's I, an I, asshole, but he didn't get hurt enough for me. Yeah, I, I think I want Willie him has bad. Willie has gone less NSFW because Pat was so repulsed in the no, last. No, now I feel bad. Like I fucked up this segment. People want no, to see you're good. Hurt. You're good. <laughs> you're good. We, we we just don't have as much gore this time. No no testicles. Bit. I think I think Alexander. what Owen Roberts said makes a lot of sense. He wins the Darwin Award. He evolved right in front of our eyes. He did. He became <laughs> an alligator. <laughs> Patrick's doing oh, his, his regular once per episode. I have to go pee. Um, he does have the bladder of a prepubescent teenage girl. It's a uh, it's a treat to deal with yeah. on podcasts. Yep, he has the bladder uh, the size of a small acorn. Yep, not even a large one. All Very right, well, let it rip. We don't need to wait for him. Let's go ahead. He's he's doing it intentionally. He doesn't want to watch. He's he doesn't. Scared. Yeah, he's he hates this. Which you know, I wanted to see him cringe. All right. So for those listening at home, I see a North American bison. It's down in the grass. Somebody with a vertical iPhone video is approaching it. He's way too close already. I know exactly <laughs> yeah. how this is going to end. Oh my god, he's about five feet away now. If that, he's so this- gonna get. Yeah, he's about to get rammed. This is an enormous can I, can animal. I can I ride you? Guy thinking. Can I ride? Can I you? ride you? Oh boy! I just pet you. Oh my god! Can I pet you? Oh boy! What are you doing? So this guy has no amygdala. That's for sure. Yeah, respect. Because this is mad respect. This is bananas. You're not very friendly, are you? Hmm. All right, all right. Will Will's really toned okay. it down this week. All right, Will. Let's see what he the did. third one's all about. Unless there's something more here. But I mean, between those two, it is tough. Bison to guy, between those bison two. guy for sure. You think so? Yeah, gators okay. aren't all that right. tough. Right. I mean, I thought one was going to nab him, <laughs> but gators are gators are kind of cowards. Bison are not. <laughs> Let's see what no. what's going on here. Will there I better really, be some carnage in this, or this segment is dead? I really oh, want. No, to, the brosters love it. I want to wait for Patrick to come back so much to show him this. It's not necessarily okay. carnage. But it is gross. All right. Okay. He's returning. Let's get a few. So there's a lot of uh, Brosners weighing in right here. They are talking. So Brosners, who do you think out of just the two wins the Darwin Award this week? The bison guy or the alligator guy? Forrest made his pick. Let's see. We're all waiting on Pat. Dead. Air. And no, Sorry. it's not. I'm reading the Brosner comments. It's there's some good stuff. Everybody's agreeing with me, bison guy. All right, Patrick, you missed a guy okay. trying to All pet right. a wild bison. Nothing bad happened. Third and final pick. Let's go. Uh, Will watered it down, didn't he? I he fucked did. it up. No, it's all good. Here we go. Third and final. I don't think so. All right. Let's, let's see. see. Let's see. <laughs> Will, he's very excited for you to see this, Patrick. Oh no. Is that a rat? That's a rat. Oh, oh my God! Get out of her mouth! Ma- his mouth? Its mouth? Day's mouth? <laughs> get out! Uh, Just a get day. out! That's if a day. That yeah. rat's oh gonna bite that God. person's tongue, man. <sighs> what is she yeah, doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Gross! But just why? Look at that nose, that nostril. Bro. It's freaking me out. That Ugh. person's gonna get fucking cut. I don't care for this. Also, get some crushed white <laughs> plague. In your life. Rats carry yeah, black really. plague. Yuck! Patrick, how much did you enjoy that? Okay, let me say this. Don't put a rat in your mouth, period. <laughs> especially don't put a rat in your mouth are the color of Skeletor's skin. <laughs> it's just a bad idea. Like, you... Fuck! If that, yeah, if that was... Great. 
if that was Margot Robbie and you watched her do that <laughs> and then she turned to you and said, kiss me now, would you would you make out with her? I mean, of it's course. Margot Robbie we're talking about. Yeah, there's no <laughs> there's no question I would make yeah, out with her instantly and with vigor. Yeah, it wouldn't matter <laughs> literally <laughs> what she put in her mouth. Dude, Forrest, you're so basic when it comes to your taste. Like, I, I knew, am. When, I, when we first talked <laughs> about it and you were like, yeah, my number one's Margot Robbie, I was like, of course it is. Like, you, you're so simple. She's like, the hottest like, girl in the world. She just she is. is a blonde woman. A perfect. Well, can you pull woman. up a picture of uh, Margot Robbie so we can see what Forrest's exact type is? Pat, I like, okay. I like an exotic lady, man. Uh, I want to. Yeah, see we've a had this argument at least twenty times. Patrick, who's your who's your number one celebrity crush? <sighs> For a long time, man, it was Mila Kunis. Um, yep. She just comes off a little this. bitchy <laughs> now. Uh, God, I would say probably. Um, Probably the woman I'm planning on stalking at some point. Uh, Smart. Jesus. What? So if it ever happens. Well, I have a guy in my fantasy football team that's re had really fucked me this year. And so I I, okay. I ended up following his wife on Instagram. <laughs> so, so I think she's my number one. Okay. All yeah. right. That's not Matt a celebrity. McHugh thinks that, Ritep, who is yeah. your celebrity crush? Well, Matt McHugh thinks that it's uh, Ariana Grande, Ugh. but... <laughs> No, def not. Yeah. Well, I mean, she has that flavor that you're into, no Pat, good. but not my no good. I'm into uh, Rashida Jones from the office era. She's mine. Rashida Jones. Whoa. Oh, the brunette that dated Jim in the other office for a bit. Is that Rashida Jones? What do you yeah. like about yeah. her? Just that she's so plain and sort of normal and not that That's great. That's got to be it. Obtainable. Yeah, you could get her. Um, yeah. Well, you, you just probably match with no. her on. You just shot for someone. What do you like about Mila Kunis, dude? She's uh, literally not even good looking. No, no, she's super hot. Come on, come Bro, on. She no, looks like she would I stab won't. you in your sleep, and I like that. That's that's your go to there. Okay, well, that's that's a fair assessment. Rashida Jones is a is cute, and I don't get it. she's. Yeah. I, I don't fucking care. Yeah. I don't get it. get it. Puke. Margot Robbie for the win. Please. So, all right, change topic here. We're getting <laughs> really derailed. Uh, Patrick, Margot Elliot Robbie Miller asked, what are some of the other big debates you and Pat have while filming episodes? I feel like you and I argue, like, friendly argue, but argue about so much stuff on shoot. You know, oh, oh. oh God, I could only imagine. <sighs> yeah, I feel like a lot of the times, the arguments of Forrest and I have had, truthfully, are ultimately just completely fueled by testosterone. They're almost over nothing. 100%. Like they I, are over that's nothing. what all of your arguments are about, Pat. That's true. Yeah, you too, bro. <laughs> like, shut oh the fuck up. We get the, you and I have been <laughs> Jesus, horrible. Calm arguments. down. <laughs> calm down. You kicked yeah. me out of your house yeah, one time. Relax. Yeah, I did calm down. House. Also, the brosters <laughs> don't come here to see us be subdued. They want Filled us to be rage. angry. No, but I, I would Jesus, say Forrest dude. and I have been in probably, what would you say, five arguments? Maybe. Five good ones, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. And none of yeah. them were about anything important. It wasn't like, nope. we should do this, we should do this. Because ultimately, that never really happens because you're driving <laughs> the thing and then I'm just trying to figure out, okay, we can do that. We, you know, here's a way to do it. But we, we've been in quite a few arguments where just Forrest will do something and I'll be like, ah, no, Why? that was garbage. Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> then he'll just be like, cut. And then he'll just like walk up and get in my face and be like, Yo, like, really? Really, bro? <laughs> you make it sound so much worse than it is, than it really is. Uh, <laughs> no, it's purely driven is there, by Is there ever an or... argument over, over like, scientific things no. when you're on adventures? Never once. No? Never once. Forrest is always just yeah, right. I defer to the person who actually knows. You know, everything I know is either through forest or cause I've, I've read about it. Right. I, I don't actually have a background. I haven't spent my entire life in the field. Um, and as much as for, I think forest is a silly fucker, who's quite a bit of a <laughs> douchebag. Uh, wow. No, That's, but, it's but accurate. the truth is it's like, accurate. it's the only thing he thinks about and does. So I'm just like, right. I'm never going to be like, I'm right about this thing, like biologically <laughs> or scientifically, because so, I'm not. Let me ask you this. Has there ever been a time when you've been out on an adventure together, Pat, where you thought something scientifically, whatever it was about something, you thought something was a certain way or something was going to be, you know, and then you get out there and you're like, okay, let's do it this way or whatever. And then Forrest is like, no, no, that's not how uh, it works. Honestly, no. And that happens all the time so. making TV shows. 
um, that, you know, you sort of have spent more time researching it than the person who's on camera saying it, but just the way that we've mm -hmm. set up extinct or alive and the shark week shoots, it's just forest is in control of everything that has to do with finding the animals, looking at the animal, right. filming the animals. And so it's just never been set up in a way where I had a strong opinion. It's like, you know, sure. we want to know, not even the meat tree. That no, was the, a, the that meat was tree was brilliant. mutual. Yeah. yeah, that was a brilliant collaborative effort. I would say I that was that 60 40, Patrick, by the way. If not, if not 70 30. Like he he just really led the reins because he made it as a joke. And I was like, no, that's brilliant. Well, and he was yeah. like, no, it's so not. That's, that's, like, that's yes, interesting, it's actually though. Really brilliant. So Pat had like a silly ass idea. For those who don't know, the meat tree, you guys essentially, when you were in, where were you guys? Zanzibar. Zanzibar. Yeah. Uh, looking for the leopard, which Zanzibar if you could leopard. point out Zanzibar on a map or tap, I'd give you a hundred dollars. I can't. I know. And you guys Such basically cool went to the store and, and got a bunch of meat, threw it at a tree. You hung meat all over trees. Well, and one this was tree. Pat's idea. Well, what happened? What happened was this. We, we, knew we had a, a long time in Zanzibar because we yep. felt like, well, I, I guess I would say forest felt like this was actually an animal where maybe it could be there because once we got into the jungle, it was, there was nobody there. There was right. nobody there, right? right. There were, there nobody weren't the tourists. Jungle. There was no, like, it's a very small little jungle, this protected pocket within this Island of Zanzibar, which is heavily populated. And so then we, mm -hmm. we, you know, we went in not thinking it was a great chance and then got there and we're like, Holy shit. Like, there's fucking no one in this place. Like we yep. hiked for a couple hours each day and we'd be like, we're in pockets where there's no trash. There's no sign of humans. Um, and so I just said to Forrest, we were drinking some beers and I said, dude, tomorrow is tomorrow night supposed to be like this, like wind storm's going to come in. Like what if we just hung meat high up in a tree? And then Forrest was like, <laughs> well, maybe we just build a whole meat tree. Right. <laughs> and then we started listening to music and just dancing around, singing the words meat tree. And yep, pretty uh, much. yeah, pretty much. Was, it yeah. was like three in the morning. And we now people seem to think that we're always hammered. We were not always hammered. We worked very hard, but we were occasionally yeah. hammered. And this was a night where Patrick was like, hey, why don't you like come by, bring it, bring a beer or whatever. And we'll sit down and think of like what we're going to do tomorrow. And I remember the one the one thing that I remember that Patrick didn't mention is he's like, oh, you know, Lemley is cat. He's like, he, if you hang anything from a branch or a tree, he just goes nuts for it. And I'm like, huh? And then five minutes later he goes, Oh, what if we just like put some meat in a tree? And I'm like, huh? And I'm like, Patrick, you're brilliant. You just yeah. created a meat tree. <laughs> I love that. Like scientifically though, first of all, it worked at the end of the day and you literally fucking got what you were looking for from this crazy ass idea. And second, like, you know, you weren't such like a, like Forrest, you weren't like, no, no, that'll never, that that's, that's stupid. Like, I, I know what I'm talking about. That would never work. It sounds almost actually like a forest idea, but it was really. Well, dude, here's idea. the thing, yeah. right? And Patrick's going to support me on this because for all the shit that we argue, which is not that much, Patrick and I are obviously, he's one of my best friends in the world after all the shit we've been through together. And uh, it, it like scientists and Patrick knows this from shoots. That's why I mentioned all this. Scientists are the most closed-minded bunch of assholes on earth, right? I have to collaborate and work with them constantly. If it's not their idea, Here it's a bad go. idea. No, this is the truth, man. If it's True. not their idea, it's a bad idea. Like scientists, right, for the most right. part, are closed-minded jerks. And I know this because I've been in academia long enough to go to symposiums and hear them, you know, quietly, snarkily talking about other scientists' ideas of what a bad idea it is because they didn't fucking think of it. Like, I've never had mm -hmm. that mentality. Like, my entire mentality is to be collaborative. It's like, if you have an idea... Like, take Patrick's meat tree. Let's say Patrick came up with the idea 100% and pitched it to me. Why not fucking try it? Like, it can't hurt anything. You know what right. I mean? Why Why discredit it and be like, that's ridiculous. Like, that's not, that's, there's been no published papers on meat trees being effective for targeting leopards, sir. Like, that's fucking, right, like, right. Why, like, who fucking knows? Like, sure, throw some meat in a tree. Like, what's the worst that can happen? Something else eats it. You know what I mean? And I, that's yeah. that's kind of always been my mentality is like, trying to be rigorous and take this this approach of proven methodology well nobody else is fucking proven extinct animals are still out there right so we might as well throw the throw the fucking darts at the wall and see what sticks and i think that's what happened with the meat tree and has happened a couple different times that has been successful mm -hmm. and it's been great yeah you you're getting a lot of feedback here daniel uh, I was just say, people want 
literally like at least 15 people have said they want meat tree uh shirts oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Happen. we'll get the meat tree merch going but a lot of people are talking about how they've had to deal with like research profession professors and uh you know, tutors and shit. And they're talking about how it, and, uh, Graham, uh, James O'Hara says, Graham Hancock says that same, the same thing about scientists. A hundred percent. So it seems to be a pretty right. like common dude. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's common thing thing, undeniable, man. man. And yeah. like, I know a lot of our listeners are, uh, either like, uh, people younger than us, especially me and you, Ritep, uh, <laughs> That yeah. are in <laughs> academia and getting their PhDs. Or, you know, we have a, a very smart audience on the show. We do. Um, it's true. Yes. But fuck, man. Like, the people that I really like and respect that I've come across in f- the field of archaeology, anthropology, fucking biology, all that shit, fucking hate academia, man. Like, yeah, it is, it is brutal. Like, you just – it is a, a system that is set up to make profit – undeniably you write textbooks you sell the textbooks you revise the textbooks every fucking year right you revise them and Mm -hmm. sell new versions and change the page (laughs) numbers so that the kids have to Mm -hmm. buy a new 200 dollar textbook in the science field every single fucking year man and you just it's just set up so that science doesn't move forward and it's really fucked up man and there's there's clearly a new guard like people like Forrest or like Courtney Borgerson who we've worked apologist she's slash awesome. biologist she's the best it's amazing um and they mm-hmm. will just tell you like she's a Harvard you know Courtney's Harvard fucking PhD and she'll tell you like academia sucks yeah like it Straight right, up. they will keep your shit down even if it's true because it couldn't interfere with their books and that yeah. is it's it. it sounds it sounds like it's pretty similar to how a lot of people think in the professional world. I had a lot of people when I was an assistant editor on TV shows and shit who would once I got close to them they'd talk about how they would intentionally do things to basically keep their job and not let other people get ahead and like talk about how it was a thing for them. And I mean, I've never no, understood I, that. Like a, I've never understood that mentality. It's, like help support other people and promote is. other people. Don't fucking knock them down or bring them down or slow them down. It just makes no sense to me. Speaking of which, I just saw Jenna favors comment. Jenna, you're insane, by the way, in the best way possible. <laughs> Meat tree was my nickname in high school. Good for you. <laughs> oh man. It's so good. Oh man. That's fantastic. Yeah, she we got a uh, question. We got a question from Ben Stredwick. He said, this is a good one. Have you guys ever found an animal right away and had to fill the rest of the episode on uh, extinct or alive? Did you guys ever find anything right away and then you had to like make it something or is it, is it was, always a no? The closest was the tortoise, right? Because that was like four days in, and then we didn't we didn't lie about anything. We didn't like go backfill the episode. What we did is go back and look for more signs and were unsuccessful, sure. and then just told the story of transporting it to the to the facility and unloading it. But four days is pretty short fucking time. Still, yeah, you know, usually well, we're out I mean, there for a couple of weeks, uh, 10 days, whatever. Oh, shit. Yeah, so four days is well, yeah, pretty I mean, quick. Even four days of footage, though, is still probably a lot of footage, right? Or like a lot of uh, yeah. just bullshit that you're doing out there. I mean, four full days, that's like fucking 50 hours of it shit. It is, but, but you have to realize that four days of what I'm doing is four days of like hiking. Right in the heat and looking right. <laughs> un- looking under bushes, which does not fill an hour sure. of television. So there was kind of more. Right, Patrick, am I, can you think of anything else where we we had to kind of like make up time? Not really, because that no. was the closest, and Fuck we no. didn't make up time. We just we found the animal, you know, two thirds the way through the show, and then spent the other third yeah. showing it getting getting well, home. Well, that was but, also an interesting episode because we. We did go back for several days and look for the mate, right? So we went and yep. searched for uh, a, uh, a male to potentially inseminate, found scat, found definite, undeniable scientific evidence of another uh, tortoise, right. Um, right. Mm-hmm. but didn't find the animal. And none of that ended up making the show just because of you know TV shows or TV shows, and you have to cut them down to a certain right. length. Um but so that was that was sort of it was actually interesting. That was a little bit misleading, wasn't it, for us that like we never showed that part of it. 
It was, yeah. We never, we never showed that we spent two. What was it? Two, two additional full days scouting. It was for three, another animal. three, three, yeah, yeah, three. Wow. Because I, you know, yeah. like, and that's the thing that people, I guess, don't understand when you make TV. If we had found the second animal, I think we would have shown all of that, of right? We would have yeah. shown, oh my god, like we went back out and we did all this, but we spent three more days looking for the animal a second animal and then went, wait a minute, like we have to get Fern to the, to the facility. Right. Like we can't just keep doing this, you know, like mm -hmm. let's make a decision here. And the executive decision, AKA Patrick's decision, cause he's the executive was to, to move. I mean, it was all of our decision yeah. was to move on and take Fern to the, the center. Um, and so, you know, all that, those three days of footage of looking for another animal just end up hitting the cutting room floor, so to speak, because there's yeah. nothing to show. And you know, what's funny is that those three days were brutal. Yeah. I mean, sucked. like 100, <laughs> 115, Every day 115 degrees, oh, very little uh, tree cover or anything on that island. So, and at that point we had the entire crew, right? So everybody yep. was out yep. there mm -hmm. just uh, fanning out, had a grid and we're just searching. And it was just, you know, black rock, reflecting the sun so back up hot. in your face. God. So 115 felt like 130 and it was just three, God just really, really brutal days where like, you were the only thing managing your own body temperature. Like we're just, you just have to yeah. once an hour, just lay down under a bush. Um, and we did that for three <laughs> entire days and, and oh uh, all God. the forest talk about the fucking beach entries to get on oh, to the, the Island every single day. And that I think that, you know, more, more things that, that you never really understand from watching the show is like we had, you know, there's like six foot swells. There's this jagged volcanic rock that I would most closely associate to, to glass shards. Yep. Like I, I couldn't even glass. know how else to, mm, yeah. like it crumbles beneath your feet in these spiky rigid shards. Um, that's all weathered Jesus. from the volcano. I mean, it's brutal, man. And to yeah. beach, to land, we have to run the dinghy up against these rocks because there's no like nice beach or, or, you know, soft sand or anything like that to bring the dinghy in with these five foot right. waves and then jump from the pontoon of the dinghy of the inflatable boat onto these rocks and then try and scramble up in between sets of waves. So you're literally just like taking this leap of faith towards the rocks, landing on the rocks and then scrambling up like hands and feet and shins and everything just cut to shit. And those are the oh things that just God. never make TV. You know, it's like, the leeches in Borneo, man. I think I pulled. I think I pulled 250 <laughs> leeches off myself over the course of like four or five days. You know, never makes a show. It's like, yeah, I got, I, I get it. You got leeches, you know. But did you find the animal? And and I think people. That's one of the things that I think people like about this podcast, right? As we talk about that shit that you don't get to see, because each episode of TV, and you guys both know this from making TV, is the culmination of like years of work, months of preparation, you know, weeks in the field crammed into 40 minutes. So you can't show things like Patrick and I pranking each other or drinking and coming up with meat trees or leeches on our <laughs> socks or beach launches. Like there's not enough time to show all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is, it's what I love about the podcast fucking medium, man. You can really get into shit guys. Jason abs asked uh, Forrest, if you were forced to film with another wildlife show or personality, what would you pick? That's kind of a tough question. I mean, but do you have any idea? what you would pick to do like if i was forced you know i mean yeah i mean i'd love to go film with like steve Irwin if he was still around right like he he was yeah. a madman he was nuts he wasn't a biologist yeah. like his his understanding of wildlife was purely observational it wasn't academic at all like i'd love to go out with steve Irwin and be like hey steve do you know that that jellyfish actually is you know, a culmination of thousands and thousands of different organisms to make one living bo body. And he'd be like, Oh my God, that's insane. I didn't know that. I just thought it stung might, you know, yeah. <laughs> like I think it'd be dope mm -hmm. to do something like that. Um, yeah, but Very you know, cool. there's, there's no, there's no shortage. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm good buddies with coyote Peterson. Like we make fun of him all the time on here because he's a friend of mine. Uh, you know, I think him and I are planning <laughs> right. on shooting something in, uh, in October, uh, there's plenty of people I'd like to work with. Anybody, any of our brosners, if you're into wildlife, I want to work with you. Like, it's as simple as that. If you can share the passion that I have for these things, I'd love to be involved. Yeah, for sure. I mean, fuck, we have tons of people who are constantly asking about how you got into it. You know, we found out last week that you were shit in college and, and didn't do any work and somehow what? you made it through. I don't Sorry. remember that. Just, just in the first part when you were, <laughs> I don't remember that. You, 
<laughs> when you were, I'm just kidding, but you were, you were partying in your first semester and barely made it through. Um, all right. So Daniel wants to know about the MOA. So the MOA, for those that don't know, Will, WT Willie, can you bring up a picture, uh, an ancient picture of a MOA next to a yeah. human, if you can search for that. MOA was um, a species of elephant bird. Think dinosaur, but, or sorry, dinosaur. Think ostrich, but much, much larger. And uh, Daniel wants to know, what do I think of the MOA? Do I think it could still be there? Sadly, Daniel, I do not. I do not think that the MOAs are still around. And I'll explain why. Much like the ostriches, they are flightless, right? Which makes them an easy target for hunters. Now, the difference between the ostrich and the MOA was that the MOA lived in New Zealand, where it had no natural predators, right? Because of its gigantic size, it didn't have to deal with predators. Now, ostriches in Africa have to deal with lions and leopards and hyenas and cheetahs, etc. So they're very good at evading predators. Now, when human beings settled New Zealand, they saw this giant walking turkey. That's not a moa. <laughs> that's, for, that's for Tep's crush. Uh, that's an Ewok. Yeah, what no, no, no. That's that's a a Sheeta Jones is a beautiful No, no, woman. yeah, a moa. That's what we're talking about. No, that um, is a moa, in New Zealand. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you've seen one, Patrick, in the museum. I remember you texting me. But um, so the short answer, Daniel, I don't think they're still there because when people settled New Zealand, unlike the ostrich, the moa had no natural predators. So you could more or less walk up, bop this thing on the head and have a turkey the size of a Volkswagen Beetle to roast over a fire. And I think that's exactly <laughs> what happened. Now, the reason I'm just reiterating, but the reason I don't believe it's still there is because this animal had no fear of human beings. If there was still a moa in existence, I think it would come waddling out of the bush and a bunch of people would see it because it doesn't have that intrinsic fear of predators. It isn't elusive. It isn't shy. These animals mm. were very much so out in the public eye, much like the dodo and getting hunted and killed for meat until there were none left. So my, my honest answer, as sad as it is, is I don't believe there are any MOA left. Yeah, it's also a pretty populated uh, island, right? New Zealand or two islands. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's pretty populated Tough to say that there could be anything hiding there aside from a very small insect or something like that. Right, right. Uh, what about so a, a lot of people commenting that the moa that the ho the host eagle was was one of its predators. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. It, yep. It, it, it was a giant eagle, huge wingspan, largest eagle that ever existed. WT, if you could pull one up. So what happened, um, Ritep, was that the host eagle. Uh, mm -hmm. It was this giant fucking eagle, right? Forest. I don't know yep. what the wingspan was like eight or 10 feet. Massive Something like eagle. that. Huge. Yeah. And what it would do yep. is it would bomb down and it would smash the giant moa in the head with its beak on like this tree. Oh, ball, yeah. And it would mm -hmm. eat the moa. But when the Polynesians arrived in uh, New Zealand and, and hunted out the moa very quickly, it took away the food source of the host eagle. There are no rodents really on the island, anything like that. And so then the host eagle died out because the moa died. And that was But first, okay. the one part that That's you're leaving out, Patrick, that is is noted in several Maori uh, folklore accounts is that in between that period when they hunted out the moa, but before the host eagle disappeared, the host eagle had to find something else to prey upon and it turned to the Maoris. So it was actually eating children out of villages, as the accounts go. Just imagine this yeah. this eagle with this 15-foot wingspan swooping down and nailing kids in the village. Like, how crazy oh, is that? Man. And eating them. So then the Maoris actually Terrifying. turned towards kind of killing and eradicating the host eagles out of fear. And that, con uh, and that as well contributed to the speed at which they met their demise. So, and that yeah. was, and that was just a, like an old, an old folklore, but that wasn't a real thing. No, that was, they... there, there are accounts that, I mean, there are, there are historical accounts of host eagles taking Maori children. And, you know, this is kind of the Maori wow. don't have a history of literature as far as I'm concerned. So there's nothing to right. like support this, but if you go to New Zealand, it's very, very well discussed and known fucking interesting man yeah that's fucking crazy these giant 15 foot wingspan on a bird i'm glad it's not around <laughs> that could take me out easily easily if that thing fucking came from above that's like a like a small plane yeah no they're they're big animals they were super hey cool. forrest interesting comment from one of the brosners uh hey we, we need a forrest galante tr children's animal education show huh interesting that's indeed so weird that's so yeah weird isn't that weird that we, a, 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 imagine uh, if i don't know say patrick and forrest put their heads together came up with an incredible wildlife education show that were to take place 
all around the world with extremely odd, beautiful, and bizarre animals, somewhat similar to W.T. Willie's Bizarre Animal of the Week, except in show form. Yeah. That would be a good show. Crazy. I'd watch it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. Well, look, we are going to be. Re- They're like, we've pitched that show to thousands. We have not. Of no, we haven't. Because we're going to do it ourselves. We are uh, currently considering, obviously, Forrest and I both work in television. We're very much considering just appropriating the content that we wanted to do on TV originally that because of yep. COVID, everyone's like, you can't do any of that shit. And just doing it on fucking YouTube, man. Like yep. TV's a We've been considering to it. deal with. Like, why not just put it out there? Like it's good content. Let's just fucking do it. Yep. So yeah, yeah. actually bro starts way in. Like, how do you guys feel? This is a perfect um, platform with which to ask this question. How do you guys feel about, the idea of us launching a YouTube series. Like I'd love to hear Patrick or and I have spoken about this, spoken about making a YouTube channel that isn't just the three of us talking into a microphone and chatting with you guys, but actually going out and filming content like we do on extinct or alive. Would you guys watch that uh, here on YouTube? Love to hear your comments. Let us know. I sure. But they would. But Sweet. also one thing I wanted to say guys is it's time for what? Battle. It's everyone. Oh. It's, it's literally people. People are like, it's not going to be Christmas unless you guys do a battle royale. Like people I love that. the battle royale. Yep. It's uh, why people tune in. Now, what do you got, Patrick? Here's what I'd like to do. Wild Times yep. Willie, who's getting shit on in the chat, FYI. Because yeah, he's, not, he's, he's Well, no, he's getting shit on because <laughs> he's not being active in the chat and people want to talk to him. Uh, Got a lot going on back there. He's got to pull he's shit also, up. Get Wild shit Times Willie really is a very handsome guy. Let's, let's give him yeah, more credit. He's, I, I definitely want to fuck him. I, I want. That's the only reason I suggested <laughs> him to on, you when he uh, DM'd no, me. He, he would not take you into his butt. Um, yeah. <laughs> he's way out of your league, Rutap. Yeah. He's way out of your league. <laughs> yeah, he, I am a handsome young man. He wouldn't take you in him. <laughs> I I like this. This was a Brosner suggestion from the chat. I copy and pasted it. Okay. All right. Nice. So, you know how to do that? I didn't think you did. Control C, son. Um, what about the pace? Control V. <laughs> He's got it. Yeah. All, All right. right. What so, do you got? What do you got? There are pris- prisons in Siberia. Where, okay. if you watch Russia's toughest prisons on Nat Geo, they patrol the prison. With dogs. Right? Mm, so okay. Literally, there are no bars on the cell doors, but the prisoners know if they walk out, they will be fucking mauled and killed by Russian ovcharkas. Very. We've done this before. No, 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 yeah, no, no, mate, no, 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 mate, no, no, no. Okay, there, there better be a spin on continue, this because we've definitely continue. done this Here's one the before. battle royale suggested by Brosner and Matt McHugh. You have to police the human race. With three okay. species of animal. Oh, it's, interesting. It's, yeah, it's similar. The last, the last one was about transporting and guarding. Just no, one this is different. I get it. I get person. it. It's it's, it's different. Yeah. yeah. God, you have a big head. Your I like head it. Takes up half the screen. You stupid. Fuck. Are you talking yes, to me or for you? You you have a giant head, man. Mate, the only I've reason you make fun of the size drunker. of my head I, bro, is because of the size of your head. Did you start drinking at 8 a.m.? I haven't had a I, I, I don't know. Um, all right. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. That's a bad <laughs> sir. We've recording. seen you right. on air take sips. You, sir, right. are a liar. <laughs> all right. And seven peas because well, you have I've a tiny bladder. Every time Forrest about. mentions extinct or alive, I have to drink. All right. So three yeah, animals cool. guarding yeah, the human race. You want to control the human race with three animals. You have to build a team. It's going to be okay. a snake draft, which Peter will instinctively screw up. So he, Correct. Let's, let's just let him go in the middle. What's that? Yeah, you're a disaster. <laughs> um, I'll go first since I'm posing the okay. question. Wonderful. So yep. I got to build a guard staff. I want to control humans with these animals. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. So yep. I'm going to start right off. Okay. With bees. Ooh, interesting. No, a little biological warfare. Yeah, not murder hornets. I'm just going to mm-hmm. start off with bees. Regular old okay. wasps. Okay. Are those the same, okay. course? Those count? It's the same. Yeah. They're well, not so the same, your... but okay. okay. Bees or wasps, Here's either or. Because they have the power of flight. 
they're a nightmare to deal with. If you've yep. ever been swarmed, there's no time you feel more fucking helpless than when it's true, okay. all around your head. It'll make you run into traffic. You're a, it's a disaster. So I want bees yeah. patrolling humans if I can control them. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And that's going to be my first pick. I, I right. just want to point out that I got a text from my girlfriend who's watching live. And before you said bees, she said bees. And she's very angry well, <laughs> that you uh, picked bees. I mean, look, if it's that much of a problem for you, what? I'm validating. Text I'm just validating your pick. Address. Relax. Yeah, just have some just, coffee, Just mate. send her one of Papa P's dick pics. He's got a whole roll of Yeah, I mean, of just tell her where I live. Yeah. And it's about the size of a bee. Yeah. All right, I'll go next. I'll go next. Uh, All right. I know you will. We're talking about three animals to okay. to manage the human race. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So I I am I am a leader by power. So I'm going to lead with the fear factor. I'm going to put the fear of God into human beings. And there is one animal that stands above the rest when it comes to being the most terrifying creature on the face of this earth. And that, my friends, mm-hmm. is the humble goose. If you've never encountered a goose, they are absolutely terrifying. A goose coming at you at speed from a park is one of the scariest things that you can ever have to deal with. I I there I would rather face a cobra than a goose 100% of the time. So I'm going to I'm going to pick geese to begin. Okay. Uh I guess I'm third and that means that I pick two. Is that right? Very is that good, how a snake Rich draft Ab, works? Very good. Okay, since I can pick two, I can uh, put into place a little bit of strategy here as in a you know, game of chess and not checkers. My first pick is going to be an animal. Shut the fuck up. Is going to be an animal. <laughs> Justin, oh my what's God, up, is dude? Is that WT Willie? No, it's Justin. No, it won't what's be he pigs? doing? I don't know. He can't hear me because Patrick's got his headphones in, but he's got a pig, so that's fun. I hope you have a COVID test, you sick fuck. We are. Okay, so (laughs) my first animal is going to be a very simple animal. This animal is going to be used not for attacking, but I need an animal that's going to be able to basically tell me what's going on. It's going to be able to pass information to me, and it needs to be able to collect tons and tons of information. It's going to be a network of just your typical house fly. I'm going to have millions of flies flying awesome. around and they will be able to, they will be able to survey yeah. the fucking land and tell me where the humans are, what's going on. They're they're impossible to kill. You Patrick won't have weapons. Is so You'll unimpressed be... by your house flies. Like right. He's rolled his eyes three Dude, times. That's bees that don't sting, idiot. It, it is God. bees that don't that's sting. A and uh, well, I mean, I have two picks. Oh, well, you just so wasted my... one, boy. <laughs> Can you shut your fucking mouth? He cannot. Can you just shut up for one second? He cannot. Oh, God. Okay, so my second pick will be the offensive bee that I, or the offensive fucking animal that I need, which is going to be the giant hornet, the Asian giant hornet, which will kill, first of all, all of Pat's bees, no fucking problem. It will also be able to survey the land, although not in the numbers of my common house fly because they reproduce and live for two weeks and there's millions and billions of them, but your fucking bees will all be killed by my giant Asian hornet because they love to feed on bees. Fuck you, Pat. My next animal will okay, also be you attacking only have your two. entire you two. You're done. You're done. You're done. So you You're two. done. No, I know. My next pick. My next pick, uh, idiot. One is useless. House fly? What a nightmare. Holy <laughs> shit. Very, very unimpressed by your pick. All right. So, so Ritep, as this is your first snake draft, the way it works is I actually go next. I, I get. I just like to point out that a broster had a very good point in that uh, Brian Arson, who said, isn't the point to police the people. I kind of lost sight of that. You did. With my pick. Yeah. Yes. 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 You just got angry <laughs> and wanted to be up. I can't believe neither of you idiots called me on it. It's. We're not gonna. We're not gonna ruin. We're not gonna jeopardize right. our chances right, of winning the battle royale. Goose. All right, All so right. Peter, All right. You got a Peter goose. has uh, mosquitoes and fruit flies. What's next? <laughs> the police people. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah he's an idiot. Animals. Fuck. Yeah. Two <laughs> shredded wheat. All right. So I've got the terrifying 
flock of geese that are going to just kind of rein you in in general. Like, but it. what if you know? What if what if these people, these people that we know and are trying to police, are trying to escape over things? If they're trying to go up high, they're trying to climb over things. Okay. You know, we have to have all all our bases covered. So I I also need a creature of the sky. But unlike the the humble bee. The murder hornet, which I'm not entirely sure how that played into it, or the house fly, still not sure how that played into it. Um, I, I need another <laughs> aerial assault creature, right? Something that can okay. police the people from climbing up and climbing over. Smart, smart. But people, now keep in mind, people are not flying. They're not flying. They're, 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 they don't have wings, so I don't need a winged creature. So my creature just mm -hmm, has to be mm -hmm. better at climbing and more agile to police people trying to go up and over things. So I'm coming in. Mm with the orangutan, right? I've got geese on the ground. Wow. I've got an orangutan that's going to climb. It's going to be on skyscraper tops, on treetops. You try and go up. Tell me an orangutan isn't going to just rip you limb from limb it if will. you're trying to escape anything at all. It's going yes, it to will. do that. Okay. Yep, it will. Yep. I think that's okay. Okay. And much better than Peter's ant and fruit fly. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. all right. mm -hmm. So look, mm -hmm. I already have bees. There's a lot of them. They're going to sting yep. you. So many bees. I, I'm going to use the bees to drive you to certain areas if you're protesting and rioting against my policy, which is mm -hmm. my, you know what my policy is. You know what it is. Okay. I'm just. Yeah, like, give it to us. <laughs> just give it to us. It's just a love. We'd like to it's hear a it. love, man. You just got to love. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, my God. Ratep, why are you so negative? Mate, I'm literally just sitting here researching on Google. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. For, so anyway. for the 35th week in a row, he's Googled the word animals to try and pick up a couple. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. Fuck off. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my bees drive people to the sea. I'm going to have okay. them just make people go to the shore. They're going to go into the mm -hmm. ocean. And I'm going to command all sharks. The good thing good. is I don't have to pick a species. I'm just picking shark. Mm -hmm. So I have wow. lemon that's sharks, broad. mako sharks, white yeah, sharks. Yeah, that's broad. I've got that's everything. Broad. Even whale sharks. Okay. Yeah, you they're got them. They're doing their thing. All right. So okay. you go into the ocean, you go, ah, oh, fuck, man, there's sharks everywhere. They're not on fucking Alcatraz, mate. They're, what if this? No, there no, are no. sharks in warm waters, cold waters, medium waters. What about on land? People. Uh, my bees are driving you to the ocean. When okay. you get there, you'll your third your pick charge. better be. And then, by so the way, good. you're also going to deal with my octopus fleet. Oh wow, shark yeah. and octopus fleet. They're a lot of under a little, a lot, a lot of terror coming from the ocean. Yeah, because the bees are going to drive them there. I have a coordinated attack. This you do very, very yeah. good. It's... I have one. Yeah. Next. Yeah. Now it's forest it's and turn. forest. Sir, next. So take your. I was going to actually quiz. Wait, Ritep is it my turn? No. God damn Just it, kidding. dude. It's insane. <laughs> All right. So I go next for Tep and then you finally go for your last pick. Okay. Um. So okay. now look, I have my, my ground assault covered. I, I'm still thinking policing the people, a goose. No one's taking it on. Mm -hmm. Laugh all you will or don't because it's not a very good joke. Geese are terrifying. Um, mm -hmm. Secondly, mm -hmm. I have my orangutans to police people from climbing over things, going over the top. Now, as we all know, people like to burrow out of things. Every prison inmate, every movie you've ever seen where they escape from a prison, there's some burrowing with a spoon behind a poster. So what are we going to do okay. about that? We have to keep people from burrowing, right? We're policing the people. Well, I'm picking the mole snake to keep on that. Now, the mole snake, super venomous, crazy looking snake, comes from Southern Africa, uh, a distant relative of the cobra family, super deadly, able to tunnel and burrow under the dirt, completely... Um, away from human beings. And if you so are one of these human beings trying to escape and you decide you're going mm -hmm. to burrow, you're going to, you're going to get under things and get away. In comes the mole snakes. They attack you with their little sideways fang and you die right there on the spot. Your skin melts off. That's the end of you. All right. Uh, Peter, quickly, uh, your house fly and quickly, uh, quickly shut your mouth. It's my turn. Forrest quickly uh, recap your creatures. Just real quick, in name sure. only. Yeah, I have a goose, an orangutan, mm -hmm. and a mole snake. Above okay. ground, on ground, below ground. 
Yep. I don't know. And Pat's got the sea covered, apparently, and yeah. only the sea. Pat has and nothing bees, else. sharks, and octopus. You have house flies and hornets. Do you want to pick another irrelevant mosquito? Maybe butterflies to round out your team? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, my next animal is going to utterly decimate and not be concerned with any of Pat's stupid bullshit uh, animals or his insects. And, uh, oh yeah, we're not battling each other. I hate when you guys do that. So anyways, my next animal is the cheetah. The cheetah will be able to chase down any fucking stupid human that tries to escape. If they make it to the water, I'm not concerned because Pat's brigade of sharks and gnats will eat, devour them. They're not, uh, oh my God, you just so don't get how battle royale works. Please continue. There's no idea. It's now. Nah. What are you talking about? That's it. They're, you, they're, not, you in, talking they're not in teams. We're, we're, we're trying to vie for the Brosner's vote here. They don't work together. That's fine. I mean, the, your team is horrible. So is Pat's. Okay. It's obvious I'm Dude, the winner. You're a clown. All right. And, oh, look, you are a clown. Oh, Listen, oh, Brosner's, clown. go ahead and vote. Let us know whose Battle Royale pick you like. I feel like this week's was a little soft, but hey, there is good news. You who know, they Re like. Retep started an OnlyFans account where you just it's get. It's not to see. about who they like. Yeah, it it's is. Who wins? It is. It's who but wins. But look, let's talk about the important things in life, which is you know we've got merch. Retep now has an OnlyFans account that people can pay three dollars a month to see him with his shirt off in front of a mirror. That's nice. People enjoy that. Mm -hmm. I'm not on it, but yeah. I've I've heard many people are. Um, what else, what else is news, Retep? Where can the people find us? Tell us about what else is yeah. going on. So. I wanted to mention uh, Brosner fucking, uh, God damn it, can't remember his name. Let me go to the show doc. Smart. Nature, you cruel, beautiful bitch. Uh, he's got the longest Instagram handle allowable, but he's been going through our YouTube videos and, and uh, populating all the descriptions with bookmarks to all the shit that we talk about in all the, uh, in the podcast. So if you ever heard something, you want to go back and listen to it, you want to share just that piece with a friend or a family member, you can now go back. We'll have them all updated eventually. A bunch of them are updated now. So thank you, man. Appreciate you. That's huge. You are awesome. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. Every And uh, thank everybody. Thank you, everybody, for joining the live. We made it past 100 concurrent viewers a couple times I saw in this live, even though Pat is fucking seven sheets to the wing, can barely form a sentence. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for staying sober, Forrest. You guys can see all of our shit links to listen to this uh, or watch it on YouTube, thewildtimespodcast.com forward slash info. Links for the merch, uh, the Wild Times Podcast forward slash merch. Love you guys. Hey, that's it, Forrest. Forrest Galante. Yes, sir. You make TV shows. You talk about this all the time privately. We get so much more engagement with the bros and the bro insane. on this podcast that we do from doing TV shows. It's so much fucking fun. Just yeah. hundred percent. It's fucking I feel like fantastic. every, every but time I do this, I feel like I'm engaging with a bunch of my friends, you know, like everybody messaged me. I message back. We bring it up on the show. It's just, it's great. I love doing this. And it's, it's thanks to all you brosners that we will continue doing it. Cause the pods growing. You guys are tuning in. Um, it's great. Yeah, we love yeah. it. And the other thing too is it's like a community, man. So even if we're not able to engage the entire time, people are fucking starting conversations amongst themselves. And I hope uh, we people fuck and make babies. Yeah, you know? yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, meat tree. Uh, Jenna Faber. She in, is the meat tree. In high school, incredible, <laughs> oh, incredible. Gonna sue. But um, also, guys, we I did make a subreddit where you guys can fuck around and post links and shit. It's just at Wild Times Pod. It's there. Obviously, uh, nobody's there, so there's not much going on. But if you want to moderate it or post links or do whatever the fuck and engage with the community there, feel free. Uh, so that subreddit is there. Fuck you, Pat. Mostly. Just out of everybody. Maybe next time you'll be sober. Thank you. Love you, Good guys. Night. Fuck off. <laughs>